you now to accompany us on a short journey through Hollywood, the film capital of the world, a suburb of Los Angeles. It is surrounded itself by suburban towns, Culver City, Beverly Hills, Universal City, and others. In the foreground, you see the Hollywood Bowl, which is the largest open-air arena that nature has been anywhere with perfect acoustic conditions. Hollywood Bowl has a seating capacity of 25,000 people. In the summer months of each year, the symphonies under the stars are presented here by world-famous conductors. How the people live in Hollywood, either in bungalows or apartment houses, we show you next. The California bungalows and apartments are provided with all the latest conveniences, the most modern found anywhere electric cooking apparatus, automatic refrigeration, and everything else you could think of. As for the style of architecture, we find the Spanish prevailing, but we also find many other types, as you will see in various portions of the city. The foothills of Hollywood are covered by luxurious homes and the occupants have an unobstructed view for a distance of 25 miles to the ocean. In addition to the usual Spanish style prevailing in this region, we also find Old English, French, German, and other periods of architecture, intermixed with the famous palm trees of California. Next, we see one of the many churches of Hollywood. This is of modern Greek architecture. Here is one of vertical Gothic, like the famous cathedrals of the old world. And here is one of colonial architecture. We also find many of the Spanish mission types. Here we see the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce building with an architectural style all its own. And now we pass the Hollywood Athletic Club. Here is one of the numerous miniature golf courses provided for the denizens of the movie capital. We take you now to Hollywood Boulevard to show you the Hollywood Hotel. Then down the renowned thoroughfare of the world's film colony. And we see the life and hustle as we pass the theaters and many fine buildings. There is the Warner Brothers Theater, atop which we find one of the broadcasting stations even heard to the East Coast. Now we see the famous Lemley Corner on Vine Street and Hollywood Boulevard, for which a million dollars has been refused. Here we see the celebrated Brown Derby restaurant, where some of the prominent film stars meet every day. And next we see Henry's, the restaurant in which Charlie Chaplin is one of the steady patrons and interested partners. The owner is one of his oldest and most trusted friends. 
Next, we go to the main building of the American Legion in Hollywood and admire its modernistic style. In one of the beautiful parks of Hollywood, a monument has been erected to the late Rudolph Valentino. And there the natives take us just to prove to us that Hollywood does not forget its film stars. This young lady shows you one of the latest things in evening attire. Paris was once the point of origin for fashion, but nowadays Paris can only send hints to Hollywood. For the rest of the continent looks to the motion picture screen for real information about clothes. Now that evening is here, suppose we go to a world premiere held at Grauman's Chinese Theater. The first showing in Hollywood is an event of worldwide interest. We see the brilliant illumination and the traffic congestion. And presently we'll see the stars as they talk into the microphone upon arrival, so that the less fortunate people who are unable to attend this premiere can hear what's taking place over the radio in their own homes. Thousands upon thousands of dollars are spent upon the decoration and the lights for these events. Perhaps it's in keeping because the pictures they advertise cost millions. The first celebrity we see is Bessie Love. Then Sally O'Neill. Edward G. Robinson, the famous character actor. Carl Emley Sr. And none other than Gloria Swanson. At this premiere, there are no passes to be had, and everybody attending must pay the price of $5 per ticket. Everybody who is anybody is here, and a gorgeous display of clothes is enough in itself to warrant attendance. Last week at this theater, you saw Raymond make a sensational escape from the sheriff's posse, who suspected him of being the cactus kid, a notorious bandit. Raymond has been cornered while attempting to warn his sweetheart, Dolores Valdez, against the supposed friend in whose house she is staying. Pretending to protect her from mysterious enemies, Amos Harkey imprisons Dolores and goes to search the cellar of her home for hidden gold. At Delory's home, a mysterious old man spies on Harkey's men from a secret panel. His presence alarms the gang, especially a man named Jenkins, who for some reason or other fears both the old man and Rin Tin Tin and determines to kill them. Delory's and her young friend, Buzz, make their escape and come upon Harkey's men searching her home. She also sees the old man and recognizes him. Jenkins, determined to do away with the mysterious old man, fills the tunnels with poison gas. Dolores, Buzz, and the old man are overcome by the deadly fumes, while Raymond rides madly to the rescue. And now for episode eight, the Brink of Destruction. <coughs> Something's burning back there. Air! Air! It's 
Bueno. What's that? Come on. What's that smoke? Poison gas. Let's get out of here. Freddy, come here. Come here. Look at me. Don't you know me? I'm your brother. Gold. My gold. That's it. Where is your gold? Where is thou then? Where is your gold mine? What did you do to thou then? me to the mine, and I will help you. Oh, 
Don't be afraid, Bert. I'm your friend and want to help you. Why, there is no one here? I'm sure I heard someone call. Find out what he knows. Now, Mr. Burke, I am your friend and I want to help you. Do you remember this watch? Yes. It belonged to your partner, Valdez. It tells you how to get to the mine, doesn't it? Yes, I know. Will you show us where it is? Gold. In the hills. In the hills? Isn't it here, under this house? In the hills. And will you take us to it? Sure. is in there. seem to like you. Perhaps they have a good reason, huh? Dog's mad. I never did anything to him. Perhaps not to him, but to someone he loves. What do you mean? I mean my father. I never killed Valdez. Ah, uh, the dog's action and your own denial convict you. You are the guilty man. I didn't kill him, Harvey. I tell you, I didn't. I'm not going to you. Look at that girl and 
in the closet back.
Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Stanton just asked about you, Miss. Oh, was he up? Practically, Miss. Hey ho. Nothing like a good day's sleep, my lad. Big pardon, sir? Hmm? Oh, I was talking to myself. Oh. Good mo uh good evening, Miss Brenner. Good evening. I hope I didn't spoil your evening. Oh no. I enjoy coming here. It's lovely. The quiet, I mean. Oh. No. What next? A letter from Mrs. Henderson Hall. You'll probably remember as Mrs. James. She wants you to get her another divorce. On what ground? She wishes to marry, um... Count Paso. That's the reason, not ground. Make an appointment. Yes, sir. This is practically a duplicate. It's from Mrs. Mona Cavanaugh. Yeah, and what are her grounds? The same. What? They both want to marry Conte Paso? Oh, no, pardon. Her reason is James O'Darrell. Oh. When will these women realize that reason has nothing to do with getting a divorce? Make an appointment for her. Yes, sir. Probably use uh, mental cruelty. Check up and see what grounds we used for her last time. Yes, sir. White versus white? Yes, the case is called for 10 o'clock tomorrow. You've had one postponement. I'll see it. Uh, good evening, Gaylord. Oh, my lad. Oh, you don't have to pretend to work hard. We're not clients. Don't you realize that only very dull people work this time of day? Or any time of day. I apologize for boring you with this, but I've just started. Thank heavens we're here in time to save you from that old devil work. Oh, I must do some work tonight. Well, uh, what do you want us to do? To sharpen pencils for you? Impossible. <laughs> Good evening. I oh, hope I'm in the right place. Well, I don't know. It uh, says it intends to work. What? Ah, oh, gentlemen of the jury, a lady is in distress. Good. That's where most of them belong, only I spell it with an H. <laughs> Gentlemen, the lady is young, very lovely to look upon. Ah, that's different. Very different. Thank you, gentlemen. What's her distress? Her husband will fight her divorce action. Mm, perhaps he has reasons to. What difference does that make? The lady shall have her current heart's desire, or I shall have to take down my shingle. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Who is this? This is Mr. Stanton's secretary. Mr. Rickard's there, young woman. I beg your pardon. This is Mrs. Rickard. Oh, uh, just a moment, please. Uh, Mrs. Richards. Uh, I'm not here. You haven't seen me. I want to speak to my husband at once. Do you hear? Now, don't tell me he's not there because I know. Oh, Mrs. I know what she's saying by heart. I know it. Tell her I'm not Excuse here. Me, I say, or I'll come right up there. Just a moment. Just a moment, please. Mr. Richards is not here. Oh, I know very well he is. I'm sorry, madam. Mr. Richards is not here. I've not seen him. Mrs. Richards says... I know. Don't tell me. Can you imagine her calling me here? I told her I wasn't coming here. I told her 20 times I wasn't coming here. <laughs> Have a scene? No. Bro. Well, you fellows would get married. Well, it's the normal way to live. Finding your way out of the house at night. Everybody should get married once. Hmm. Just to find out how really happy you can be. Single. I know, so I don't have to prove it. <laughs> You're both wrong. Get a wife such as I have. You don't see yours once a month. Mm -hmm. That's the point, but I'm in no danger. You are. Oh, I don't think so. A single man is always in danger. A clever woman could get you most any time she wants. Huh. They don't always stay married. Once a single man is named uh, co-respondent or even hinted at, well, you know what happens. Me, I'm married already and a great feeling of security. Hmm? Well, Richards here is married. Doesn't seem to have worked out for him. <laughs> he has the wrong kind of wife. She's interested in him. Oh, and yours isn't? <clears throat> Not in the least. Her life is peopled with flowers and uh, canary birds. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? But are you sure that's all she's interested in? Certainly. I'm afraid you're not too sure. You haven't any first-hand knowledge, have you? When I was a little boy, I pulled the braids of the coachman's daughter. And I was severely punished for it. 
I still like to play with girls. Mm. With or without braid. But I've learned not to play in my own yard. I might add that I feel the urge to play seriously. I'm sailing for Paris next week. I hope you have a rotten time. Thanks. You'd better come along. It's the only life. What do you do in New York? Uh, hibernate? I don't get involved. Or have any fun? Then I don't spend much time in New York. And I haven't a worry in the world. Oh, neither have I. Not yet. Anyhow. Uh-huh. Why, uh-huh? Uh-huh, nothing. Unless she happens to want you, which she probably doesn't. But if she did, delicately, with a tuba accompaniment, tell the whole town that you've broken up her home, and then walked out on her. That, my innocent young friend, is the new sin. And your luck will have run out. I haven't the remotest idea what you're talking about. And besides, it isn't all luck. Modest, isn't he? What do you think, uh, Miss... Uh... Brenner. Uh, Miss Brenner. I'm sure it doesn't make any difference what I think. But I would like to know. Well... Mr. Stiven says it isn't all luck that has kept him single. I was just wondering who has the other half of the luck. May I wait in the library? Oh, certainly. I'm afraid I shan't be able to work until later. I'll have your dinner served in there. Thank you. Do you suppose she meant anything by that? Hmm? Yes. Anything. <laughs> Good evening, Morton. There's something about this place that attracts me. Yes, I can understand that. May we stop here a moment? Certainly, madam. I will announce you to Mr. Stanton. Please do. Why doesn't Gaylord keep a maid? Criticizing your host? Why not, if the criticism is constructive? Who was that girl we passed in the hallway? I imagine she's his secretary. She has a look, anyhow. Comforting to have a plain girl for the darling secretary, isn't it? You know, I think Richard gets his office girls from the Farley's Chorus. Who <laughs> said that? Who hasn't said it at one time or another? Hello, darling. Hello, Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good evening, beautiful. Good evening. Well, I hope so. Hello. Oh. Isn't anyone going to say hello or something to me? I'm speechless. Lost in admiration. You never look so well. I have a special reason, dear. Come along. We're coming. Do you approve of me, darling? Always. And especially tonight. What's the occasion? Don't be curious about that. Just about me. I'm curious about everything you do. That was sweet. Shall we go in? Yes, dear. Oh, Gaylord. Who's the girl we passed in the hall? Girl? Oh, my secretary. I hoped she was a maid. You should keep one, dear. It would be uh, nice. Of course. I never thought of it. I'll attend to it tomorrow. That's a dear. I'll attend to it. Thank you. Oh, I'm not hungry. You'd better eat. He may keep you late again. I suppose. Uh, the picture. Yes? It didn't fall. Uh, I knocked it down. Yes, miss. Your dinner is served.
<laughs> well, if we expect to see any of the first act, let's get going. Oh, let's be very late. So that you can tramp on everybody's toes? Don't you love to hear them crunch? Toes, I mean. Oh, <laughs> come on, come on, let's go. Oh, I have a runner. Hmm? Change? No, dear. Oh. You're a darling. And I'm terribly happy. That's all that matters. Being happy? Mm hmm I have some news. My husband is filing suit for divorce. Ah. Really? Ah. And you, my angel, are the correspondent. Isn't that exciting? You, you mean your husband filing suit for divorce? Yes, but that's just an incident. The important thing now is you and me, Angel. So I'm an angel. Aren't you thrilled? Oh, thrilled. Congratulations, dear. Thanks, Has darling. he actually filed? They're drawing up the papers. Suppose we get ready. Gaylord, you will have to come now. Oh, uh, I'll join up later. But it's a celebration. Let him work, dear. Come along. Come on, girls. We're very late now. Didn't Gaylord look cute on his knee when you told him? He's a dear. It's a very neat grave. How do you mean, neat? Oh, come, darling. The way you hooked him. Yes, he doesn't get off the line. He's been running around loose too long. I've heard him boast about it. I do hope everything turns out all right, dear. I got the last three without any trouble, so don't worry too much. Perhaps Grace wouldn't like to have you drink so much. Oh, yes, she would. She'll make his life a beautiful dream. Until she married him. <laughs> no such thing. Let's drink to the fallen angel. That isn't me. Well, you had the life of one. Now you've fallen. Always pushed. Hey, quit kidding. This may be serious. May be serious. <laughs> you quit kidding. Can't you just see Grace on the stand, coyly admitting to the world that she is terribly in love with Gaylord? Oh, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. With just the exact number of tears explaining how she couldn't resist the dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> then when the trial is over, you'll have to marry her. Huh? To whitewash yourself. I'll think of you while I'm away, enjoying myself. There's a way out. Mm-hmm, but it's a long way off. I should say he'd be free of there in about um, four years. And Grace never stays married longer than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, uh, there's the alimony. There's a way out. There always is. Sure. Shoot yourself. Get committed to an insane asylum. <laughs> I've told you I have the only system. Married freedom. Too bad you didn't follow my advice. Ah, uh, let him suffer. It'll do him good. Sure. Come along, infant. Here we are. Well, ready? Well, you got that pretty Who's coming in my car? I am. See you later, Gaylord. Have you room for all of us? Aren't you happy? Well, how can I be? Uh, you going to the theater without me. Then I'll stay, dear. Oh, no. No, I, I have some work to do. Don't work too hard. And you'll be at the Circle Club right after the theater. Of course. We'll have fun, darling. Oh, I know we will. Till 11. Great. Coming. Bye-bye, dear. Hmm? Oh. <clears throat> oh. Sorry I'm so late. Oh, that's quite all right. You'll find everything here on the desk. No, oh, thanks. Won't take long. Uh, what does this old fool want to fight the divorce for? Man hasn't a chance with a woman like that. Who? Mrs. White? Well, who else? Where are my notes? Isn't this? Oh, good. No, thanks. What's the matter? There's nothing the matter with me that calls for anything that strong.
Expensive? Uh, the stockings, I mean. It depends on what sort you buy. Hmm. Well, I better tackle Mrs. White's marital difficulties. <clears throat> Case is open and shut. Uh, notes for the uh, direct examination of Mrs. White. Uh, how much do I pay you? What? What salary do I pay you? Thirty-five dollars a week. As much as it. Five dollars more than the last place. Well, isn't it difficult to uh, live on that sum? Difficult, perhaps, but I manage. Hmm. Uh, do you live at home? No. I share a furnished apartment with two other girls. Well, how do you manage to clothe yourself on your salary? Many girls do it on less. Dirty, crowded basements, bargain sales. Make things yourself. Mm. Presents, I suppose. My Aunt Alice sent me a nightgown Christmas two years ago. Do you intend to get married? I have no very definite ideas about it. You do have some friends. I work very hard all day, often at night. My opportunities for meeting nice men are very limited. Sometimes I doubt there are any. And if I were interested in any man I happen to know at the moment, why, I'd hide that interest. But your future? It doesn't include a husband. Good. What did you say? I have a proposal to make which may brighten your future a little. Marry me. What? I said you could help yourself by marrying me. You're asking me to marry you? Just that. You heard how Sheridan manages. Well, I want some of the freedom and security that he has. Now, you'd have more money than you have now, lots of nice clothes, and a chance to travel. Mostly travel. Well, I thought perhaps you'd like to travel. So I would, with my husband. Oh, but you'd enjoy yourself. You couldn't help it. And you'd have... All the lovely things... That I've stood in front of shop windows and wanted. Exactly. Well? No. I can't do it. A little while ago, I said I had no definite plans about marriage. Perhaps I should have said no one wanted to marry me. Oh, now, don't misunderstand me. But I've an idea of the sort of marriage I'd like. I've thought about it often. Oh, but this wouldn't be a real marriage. It would be all the marriage I'd have. And the marriage I've pictured for myself doesn't start out with my husband putting on a wedding ring with one hand and handing me a railroad ticket with the other. Ah, I've hurt you. Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought that you'd look upon it as merely... A better job. I'm in an awful jam. It would be doing me a great favor. We can hardly take that into account. It's getting late. Won't you please finish your dictation? <clears throat> oh, I can't work tonight. I'll have to try and get another postponement. Well, then I'll go now. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh... Sleep on it. Perhaps you'll feel differently in the morning. I don't see how I can.
to that guy keep you late again? Not late. It's midnight. Yes, I know, but I've been walking. Walking since 9.30. Walking? Alone? Yes. Trying to think. Oh, what's the use? None. Did a man ever try and seduce you? Good heaven! Sylvia! What happened? Sylvia, what's happened? Oh, don't get alarmed. Nothing's happened. Then what are you talking about? Something I had this morning that I've lost. My pride. My belief in myself. <laughs> I knew I was no beauty, but I... Wouldn't it be dreadful to be seduced? Well, I've discovered something infinitely worse. Finding out that nobody wants to. How did you find out that nobody wants to? I did. How? Stanton asked me to marry him. Oh! He's in a jam. And he took one look at me and said I could travel alone. Well, what's wrong with that? If he asked me like that, what's wrong with it, I don't know. Hello, dear. Bobby, uh, Bobby, Stanton wants to marry Sylvia. What? Yes, it's on the level. It isn't a pipe dream. What do you think of that? Gee, I'm glad somebody around here gets a break. Oh, Sylvia, it'll be a thrill just thinking about you. Buying clothes, getting your hair and face fixed so they look like something. And not worrying over the fact that it costs half your make. But, Bobby, Is he nice? Are you in love with him? How did it happen? Oh, say something. What's the matter? I used to think he was awfully nice. He isn't. No, I'm not in love with him. He's even less in love with me. He just happens to need a wife. What's the matter? Is he going to become a father? No. He wants to marry me to keep from marrying someone else. Oh, why can't I meet a guy like that? He wants her to travel. Live outside of New York, I suppose. Any strings? I don't think so. He's not offering you marriage, dearie. He's offering you heaven. Good morning. Santa. I've been thinking. So have I. Have you seen this? Yes, I've seen it. Well, are you going to help me out? Well... I can't see why you'd regret it. Now, come. Sit down. We'll draw up a sort of a uh, rough contract. Give us a better idea of what we're about. We can do that. Yes. Um, the, uh, the marriage of Gaylord Stanton and uh, Sylvia Brenner is to stand for one year as per contract. You see, you're not tying yourself up for life. Oh, our marriage is to be different from most. <laughs> well, anyway, we won't have to fight our way out of it. That's something. Indeed it is. Sylvia Brenner is to receive $5,000 a year, paid in advance, and may live wherever she chooses. Anywhere? Why not? Sylvia Brenner will go by the name of Mrs. Gaylord Stanton, and uh, will in no way blemish that name. I know. Go ahead and say it. It'll look well in the contract. Well, what do you say? Yes? Anything you want to wear? Well, there's, there's just one thing. It's, it's rather difficult to put in words. Well, but uh, this won't be a real marriage. It'll be, well, it's just a pretense. I know. We, you wouldn't expect, uh, well, uh, we're to be married in name only. Oh, not in fact. <laughs> That's agreeable. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, just at the way you put it. Well, then, everything's settled. 
Well, let's see. What are my engagements? I'd like to make it today. Would that be all right? Yes. I want to get out of town tomorrow. Oh, I should dine at the Lacey's tonight. Well, I can break away early. Uh, suppose I pick you up, uh, say, 10.30 tonight. Anything you say. Good. Well, uh, I'll go now. You, you don't mind. No, no, of course not. Oh, uh, uh, you better call up the agency and get me another secretary. And uh, stay and show her what to do? Mm-hmm. I know a very confident girl who might like the job. Good. Oh, uh, stop at City Hall and pick up a marriage license. 10.30 tonight. Do you, Sylvia Brenner, take Gaylord Stanton to be your lawful husband? I do. And do you, Gaylord Stanton, take Sylvia Brenner to be your lawful wife? I do. The ring, please. Vested with authority, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And I wish you a long and happy married life. Thank you. Let's go. I didn't mean to cry. Oh, that's all right. Well, what are you going to do now? Do? Why? I suggest that you go abroad. Say, to Paris. Paris? Hmm. Is uh, that what you'd like? Yes. I'd love to go to Paris. I'm sure I'd be very happy there. I'll arrange your passage first thing in the morning. No trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. You just call up my club. They'll attend to it. Thank you. Drop me a line sometime. Oh, uh, that contract. Of course, it wouldn't mean anything in a court of law. It's merely our word of honor. Don't worry. I won't trouble you, ever. I hope you'll be very happy in Paris.
like to dance? Why, Mr. Gerard? Well, this is splendid, really splendid. I didn't know you were on the boat. Didn't you? Do you remember where you did see me last? At, um, certainly, um, at Stanton. Well, I'm a little surprised that you do remember. To forget you would be an unpardonable sin. Shall we dance? Yes. Pardon me. Stuart, find out the name of the lady I'm dancing with quickly. Yes, sir. Shall we? talk about them, they're not important. Oh, no. Tonight, there's just you and I in a barrel of fun, and West waiting to be tapped. And perhaps tomorrow, a headache. Well, there's always a headache, Tablet. Another bid for the last bottle? 175. Do I hear 80? 180. 190. Thank you. Another bid? This is a lucky bottle. Two handles. Two twenty-five. Two fifty. Another bid. Sold to Mr. Gerard for two hundred and fifty. <laughs> That's a lot of money for a bottle of champagne. Not when I'm assured that you will help me drink it. Thank you, madame. You are very kind and generous. He should have thanked you. What fun would that have been for him? Fun? Yes. When he said kind and generous, he was thinking, isn't she lovely? And so the kind and generous were said warmly, as if they were important. Well, aren't they? They should be. But few people know other people well enough to find out things like that. You know what I mean? Indeed, I do. To the lady who has made this a lovely voyage, may it continue after we disembark. I've no comparison to make, but I've enjoyed it. Most women wouldn't be content with the sort of honeymoon you're having. Why, I didn't mean to say just that. How did you discover I was Mrs. Stanton? I asked the steward. He doesn't know the answers to the other questions. Too bad. You've asked me millions. I'm sorry. And very difficult questions. I'm very sorry. I shan't ask you any more. Look here. Why are you traveling alone? Is it so unusual? <laughs> That's a question, not an answer. Once you intimated, that you expected to be in Europe indefinitely, alone. 
Yes, I think it is unusual. Certainly, if you were my wife, it couldn't happen. And Stanton isn't any cripple either. You wouldn't have a wife. Not under any conditions. Think of the precautions you take to ensure your freedom. Is that your answer to getting married and taking a boat trip alone? To give Stanton some sort of protection? He believes in married freedom. And what does that mean exactly to you? Another question. I don't know the answer to that one myself. Now you're being mysterious. I don't mean to be. And after all, I am simply a married woman. So were Helen of Troy and some others. Why are you going to Paris? Oh, I didn't mean to. Oh, yes, you did. I'm going for one thing. The thing I go for every year. Adventure. And with eyes like yours, you must know there's only one sort of adventure that adds very much to the total of one's pleasant memories. Well, I hope you find what you're looking for. I think I will. Where do you intend stopping in Paris? I don't know. Is there a Martha Washington Hotel? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Let me reserve your rooms at the Crayon. I'm sending a wireless for myself tonight. Well... Oh, you'd better. It may be late when we get in, and if you wish, you can change the next day. All right. I'm so excited I can't even notice it. Are you pleased with your rooms? They look comfortable. Oh, they are comfortable. And beautiful. They're not for me. Oh, yes. Oh, no. You see, I haven't very much money. But your husband... I know enough about him to know that he can afford them. I was his secretary. <laughs> it isn't what you were, it's what you are. Well, I'm still more or less an employee of his. He's increased my salary, but not enough for this. Are you in love with him? No. Don't ask me any more questions. I'm sorry. That's all right. You're tired tonight. Tomorrow you'll feel very differently. I know tomorrow you'll spend the whole day in Modi's shops, beauty parlors, and... Oh, not that you need to, but I know you will. It will give you a feeling of courage, power. Power. Will you dine with me tomorrow? Gladly. And during the day, what? You know what. Regardez celle-ci. La tour est pas adorable. But they're all so expensive. Oh, you, madame. Just have them on when you show your husband the view. All right, I'll take them. Bien, madame. The stockings are of very superior quality, madame. All right, will you give me six pairs, please? Entendu, madame. Oh, this will make your feet much more interesting. Oh, not that they aren't, naturally. Of course. No, I like this one all right. Come on, madame. Thank you. Come on, madame. Can I open this one? No, it's too far. No, but you don't know, madame. Très bien, très bien. Madame, you should put the room more here. There? Yeah. I am doing wonders for you, chérie. Won't your husband be thrilled when he sees you? My husband is blind. Well, he can see. <laughs> so, 
wherever are we? In a nice little villa that I hope you will like. Little? Mm-hmm. Monsieur, votre parvenu? Merci. Shall we? Yes. Lovely. I'm glad you like this room. I hope you like the rest, too. I generally live here when I'm in Paris. But this year I've decided not to. I've made other plans. Too bad. The uh, memories here will miss you. Even if you don't miss them. Oh, I don't mean the place will be lonely. Won't you live here while you're in Paris? And, um... Become a memory, too? They're all pleasant memories. And you can become what you choose. Suppose I should become a, an unpleasant memory. You wouldn't. Not if you're happy here. Sometimes when you're not conscious of anyone looking at you, there's a look in your eyes that is positively sad. I think I know why. But you won't be forever on a honeymoon that might as well be spent in a nunnery. It hasn't been unhappy, this honeymoon, as you insist upon calling it. You could be happier, so much happier. Well, so could most everyone. Oh. I'd love to live in a house like this. I could do without the memories. But this would be too expensive. How do you know? Well, uh, wouldn't it? It costs me nothing to let you live here since I don't want to myself. Nothing? Practically nothing. I have to keep it up in any event. Is there any other reason why you shouldn't live here? There undoubtedly is. But I can't think of it. Take a picture? Is 
service to be sent home? Surely it is for an American magazine. Do you mind? No. On the contrary. One moment. Indeed. Very ill. Am I supposed to wait for her to die? Let me tell you, if Durant has her under his wing, she's no invalid, and you know it. Look at that. I am looking. She looks very well. Where have I seen her? What difference does it make? None. Except I suppose she spends her spare time laughing at me. I'd like to hear her. Just once. Haven't you moaned over that picture long enough? You know what she looks like. I wonder. When are you divorcing her? On what grounds? Surely there's no harm in watching an automobile race, even with Durant. That's the only thing that isn't grounds, then. Besides, they don't spend all their time looking at automobile races. you know why it takes two to create a love song you help tonight the perfume of your hair the warmth of your eyes but more important still the unseen cup that passed between us I want to drink deeply I want you should really write poetry I could now you seem to know all the words perhaps one can never discover you alone. Couldn't we step out for a moment and talk? Can't we talk here? Oh, I am not at ease here. Are you sure I'd be at ease there? Oh, the three days early. Cynthia, <laughs> dear, before I forget it, won't you come and spend July with us at Dieritz? Well, I had it. I'll persuade you. I have a pleasant surprise for you. I think. Good, thank you. She just asked me to stay with them, Beritz. I think she'll invite you, too. She'd better, or I'll cut her heart out. <laughs> Sylvia, can't we have a moment alone together tonight? Why? Oh, don't ask me why. Well, I don't suppose anyone would notice if we stepped out in the garden a moment. Almost every day. I know. Has something happened? Yes, an important something, or I shouldn't have been so urgent about it. I thought about it often. But tonight I heard someone say something that crystallized my ideas on the subject. Nearly everybody in that house believes that you and I 
know that we're... that we're having an affair. My dear, and you're afraid I'll be hurt if I find out? Don't worry. My reputation isn't very important. I'm sorry, of course. But as long as the thought is in other people's minds and not in yours and mine, I shan't be unhappy. Now you've made it utterly impossible for me to tell you what I came out here to say. And I thought I couldn't wait another minute. You'd better go in. I'll follow after everyone else has left. All right. You've forgotten me. The others have been gone a long time. You know I'd not forgotten you. Sylvia. Yes? Do you know what I've made up my mind to do tonight? Ask you to become my... What do you suppose I think about when I leave here, night after night? I can't pose as one of the Rover boys. I had only one regret about the thing I heard tonight. I regretted the fact that it wasn't true. I may as well be truthful, don't you think? Yes. I felt so restless lately and at times positively useless. I felt like that sometimes too. Useless to myself and everyone else. I'm sorry. I can't be different than I am. Sylvia, will you marry me? I'm in love with you. I have been for a long time. Things can't go on like this. Tell me, dear. Tell me, what do I mean to you? Oh. Oh, what can I say? You've made me very happy. Happier than I've ever been in my life. I could make you even happier. Don't doubt me. Oh, it isn't you I doubt. It's myself. Well, let me worry about that. That wouldn't be quite fair. Let me be as fine to you as you've been to me. Let me think, and you think too. Perhaps if I go, you'll be very glad you're free. Oh, Sylvia, don't, please. You forget, my friend. I know you. I've changed almost as much as you have. Have I changed so very much? Only someone who hasn't seen you since you left New York could realize how much. Start getting a divorce tomorrow? No. I'll start for New York tomorrow. There's someone there I must see. Can't be Stanton. Sylvia, have you... Have you a lover in New York? One would hardly call him a lover. Though I was terribly in love with him. Are you now? I don't know. I must find out. The only way is to see him... Once more.
Oh, Lee, how are you? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, what happened to you? You're gorgeous. That's not a happening, darling. That's an accomplishment. Tell me, are you glad to see me? See, am I? But are I to call you Sylvia? Why not? Well, you're not quite like her. Don't be too sure. Tell me, how is, um... Oh, him? Well, he's all right, if you like that type. Shall I tell him you're here? Uh, Sylvia. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Stanton. She's outside. Mrs. Uh... Uh, Stanton, she's back. Oh, sure is. Go on in. I hope you don't mind my dropping in on you like this. Mind? I'm tickled to death. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, when did you return? This morning. Oh, why didn't you let me know? I would have come down to meet you. I hardly thought you would. Oh, come now. I was very busy when you went away. Anyway, it's nice. You're coming to see me the day you arrive. I have some things I want to see you about. Good. I'm thinking of getting married. What? But you are married. Well, at least your year isn't up yet. Oh, I see. Well... I'll wait until the end of my year. Oh, I didn't mean just that. If you want a divorce, certainly. It's just that, well, I was rather taken by surprise. Surprise? Surprise that someone's in love with me? Oh, of course not. It's just that I was sort of counting on... But you're right. Your own happiness is all that should matter to you. You don't need me for anything else, do you? I do. Rather badly. Don't tell me you've developed too much sympathy for another woman whose husband doesn't understand her. It's the same one. Mrs. Lawrence, you are being very constant. And a little ridiculous. She says she's moving into my apartment. Then you could move out. Well, it would be very inconvenient. And besides, nobody would really believe that I'd moved out. And then there'll be a row and I'll be in a mess again. And if I don't get shot, something worse, I'll have to marry her. What, again? Do you really want to get rid of her? I do. Will you help me? I have to, don't I? No, you don't have to. And I won't let you unless you say, I want to. I want to help you. Well, uh, it'll be very simple. You've just arrived. Move your things into my apartment and take your lawful place beside me. Just what do you mean by my lawful face beside you? Well, they'll all be there for dinner tonight, and you shall be there as my adored and adoring wife. And then, after they've gone... I can return to my hotel. Surely, if you insist... There'd be no point in my staying. May I invite someone for dinner? Certainly. Reginald Durand, you know him. Yes, I've heard a great deal about him lately. No doubt. He does very interesting things. Well, I'll be there by six. I hope everything works out all right. It will. When Grace sees how lovely my wife is. I'm sure. Particularly if we convince her that we are very much in love. I'll try very hard to be convincing. Where, where did you stop when you were in Paris? Durand loaned me the sweetest little villa you've ever seen. I haven't seen it. You must. Sometime. We expect to live there. Why are you marrying Durand? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? Have you noticed the ring he gave me? Don't you like it? No. Besides, it hides your wedding ring. Oh, I think the poor little wedding ring has always wanted to hide. I think it feels sort of used. Don't make a joke of our marriage. Mr. Stanton, my almost former husband, used to have a sense of humor. What's happened to it? 
please call me Gaylord. Gaylord. Thank you. You know, husbands and wives are supposed to know each other's first names. And as for sense of humor, my former secretary, Miss Brenner, wasn't especially gifted. I think you'd better call me Sylvia. Sylvia. And it's really too bad you couldn't have known some of the things I thought. They were quite funny. That's probably Reginald. He's generally early. Well, you needn't be so obviously glad to see him. Why not if I am? Oh, Sylvia. I wish nobody were coming tonight. Just you and I. Yes? I'd like to... to... to talk to you. Good evening. I hope I'm not too early. Oh, no. No, indeed. Glad to see you, Gaylord. I missed you at tea this afternoon. That's what love does to you. It makes you terribly lonely, no matter where you are. If she isn't there. So I've heard. I don't think you'd better talk about love to Gaylord. Men so dislike discussing things they don't understand. Will you excuse me a moment? If she does marry you, I hope she makes you very uncomfortable. Thanks, but she won't. She's the most gracious, the most charming, the best humor. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I'm quite sure you don't, but it doesn't matter. Well, it was nice of her to come all the way back here to settle things fairly. Huh. You mean, uh, just to see you? Well, put it that way if you want. Well, she didn't. She returned to New York to see someone that she was once in love with. She wasn't in love with anyone when she married me. Are you sure? Quite. I don't believe it. So let me tell you. I'm not you. interested. You're not capable of knowing anything about a girl as decent as Sylvia. <laughs> when did you turn angelic? I married Sylvia in as long... <laughs> While Grace is here, Sylvia's playing that she's very much in love with me. Now, don't mess it up. Oh, well, I won't help you any. Darling, you're quite so solemn. Oh, it's nothing, nothing. And look who's here. Well. Aunt de Leon and the modern crusader rolled into one has returned. Just like old home week. Why? Hello, <laughs> Hello. Reggie. When did you get back? This morning. And you hurried right up to see Papa. Yes. Gaylord. Does he know they still print magazines? Hello, prodigal. Well, Richard, see you back. <laughs> He's not the main prodigal. What do you mean by that? Oh, it's a surprise. I don't like surprises. Congratulations, dear. Uh, thank you. And what have you been doing with yourself, Sheridan? Don't bother him. He's suffering. With gout? No, matter of cruelty. His wife left him. <laughs> oh. I thought her life was filled with uh, flowers and canary birds. Uh, one of the canaries started to sing. <laughs> <laughs> too bad, Sheridan, too bad. Yes, I guess you'll have to marry me now. And a dirty shame. It'll bust up a swell romance. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, what's the matter with you tonight? Oh, nothing, nothing important. Something's happened. I'm sorry I was late dressing for dinner, darling. Mm -hmm. Am I forgiven? I only return this morning. I can't resist kissing him every now and then. But Angel! I don't know some of our guests. Oh, of course. This is Mrs. Lawrence, Miss Munson, and Mrs. Graham. Hello. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Sheridan, I... Yes, I know Mr. Sheridan. Good to see you again. And Mr. Richards. How are you? And dear Mrs. Richards. Well, I hope? Unfortunately. Hello, Reggie. You don't have to kiss him. Are you sure? You seem to have recovered your health, Mrs. Stanton. Uh, yes, I... Uh, yeah. I'm sure it's a great relief to Gaylord to know you're quite well again. <laughs> it must yeah, be. Uh... I told Grace all about your uh, illness, dear. Oh, I see. He, he didn't was... say just what the trouble was. Uh, well, um, I suffered from uh, heart trouble. <laughs> Is it curable? Oh, yes. I had excellent care in Paris. Well, I think, dear, you could have been taken care of just as well here. Do you really think so? Are you staying in New York long, Mrs. Stanton? I'm not certain. I needn't ask you, because you'll have to go when she does, if you are to continue to get into all the pictures. He is bold coming here, don't you think? Either that or just a bit foolish, don't you think? I hadn't thought. Well, you should. You really should. I'd like to choke her, Gaylord. Did you hear what she said to me? Hmm? Uh, about her health? Never mind her health. 
You heard her. Look at her. Well? Well, uh, what are you trying to tell me? You expect me to know a woman like that? You're mad. Is she married to you? Certainly. You expect me to associate with a married woman who's openly having an affair with... Now, how do you know? Whether she's your wife or not is beside the point. What's she grinning about? Uh, really, I... Have you told her you're divorcing her? I have no grounds. Don't say that again. You tell her now. I can't stand to see that silly grin another minute. I want her to realize... All right, it. all right. You tell her before dinner. All right. Did you hear her? I don't know our guest. Have you ever met that nerve? And how is dear Mrs. Richards? She spoiled my whole evening. <laughs> she hasn't spoiled mine yet. Well, she will. That's what wives are for, to spoil other people's evenings. Why did you drag me into this alcove? Don't you see? No. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I pretend to be a loving wife and... Oh, I wish they'd go home and then we could discuss the divorce. I won't divorce you. Then I'll divorce you. Look in the mirror. Oh, kiss me. I won't. Please. You must. Well, look as though you enjoyed it. You promised. Drown out my words in case I happen to tell you what I really think of you. I just want them to see, not hear. Oh, well, they can see you all right. Just did. My goodness, your grace looks funny with her mouth open. Oh, forget her. She's why we're here. Let's talk about ourselves. That would be interesting. Did you think about me when you were gone? No. I never wanted to see you again. Liar. Oh, perhaps you're right, but I love to stick you with pins. I'm glad you're back. Even with pins. Sylvia, darling. No, don't say anything. Oh, I wish you'd go home high. Calm I'm yourself. Sorry. Don't get so excited. Oh, yes, Don't get so excited. Please. Oh, what's the matter? I'm sorry. I'm I'm nervous. It was an accident. Oh, <laughs> quite all right. Dinner is served. Shall we? Could we wait just a minute? I'd like to call her. Certainly. Uh, ten minutes. Very good, madam. Will you come with me? Please don't trouble. I know my way about. I have no doubt. But I've moved the powder. Aren't you overdoing it a little? You know, you're making Sylvia very uncomfortable. She's married to me. You might remember that I'm in love with her. It does seem changed somehow. I thought you'd notice. Lovely, isn't it? Very. Isn't Gaylord thoughtful? You know, when I came home, we had all sorts of powder and things here just for persons who happened to drop in. Very thoughtful. Do you want there? In a minute. By the way, what did you do with the things you found here? Threw them out. You wouldn't. But I would. We'd better understand each other. Gio, I thought we did. Are you going to divorce him? No. On the contrary, I've forgiven him. I think we have an excellent chance to be very happy. You've forgiven him. Has he forgiven you? You've been playing around with Durant. I've heard things. I've seen pictures. It isn't improper to be seen in a picture with a gentleman. I'm not ashamed. I don't care. I love him. And, and I love him. And I can keep you just where you are. You'll never marry him because I'll never let him divorce me. Never, do you understand? Uh, do you wish powder? I'd like gunpowder. <laughs> You'd like it, perhaps. But you're not fool enough or courageous enough to use it. I'm leaving. 
I'll take everyone with me. I'll ruin your triumphant dinner. You know, I was hoping you would. Get my things and take me out of here. Oh, what's happened? Plenty. Are you going to take me out of here? Oh, uh, Sylvia, uh, Grace wants to know if we're oh, taking... Oh, if you do that, I'll... Oh! Mrs. Lawrence, haven't you forgotten something? No. I believe Mrs. Lawrence did forget something. She wished you all to leave with her. What? Oh. Not you. After all I've meant to you, if you had one spark of manhood, What's you... What's happened? None of your business. Oh, you probably coached her. I haven't the remotest idea what you're talking about. So she's an invalid. <laughs> Are you coming? No. Then you'll never see me again. Well, I'll try and bear up. Well, can you imagine? <laughs> What's the matter? Why, uh, Mrs. Stanton said that Grace wanted us to leave with her. So I do. Mrs. Stanton wishes a nice, quiet evening at home with her husband and her lover. Sap. This has all the earmarks of a very pleasant evening spent at home with Mrs. Richards. Come on, dear. You seem to have accomplished your purpose. Let's get out of here. Yes, but we haven't had dinner yet. Plenty of places for that. I know, but uh, I have some packing to attend to. Do you want to stay? A little while. You see, I have some things I must talk over with my husband. Will it take long? No, not long. You send Gaylord to me. What about dinner, madam? Uh, later. Oh, you are still here. So are you. Uh, we may not be dining for some time. In fact, we may call dinner off entirely. Indeed. We uh, hate to inconvenience you, though. Oh, how thoughtful of you. There's some really charming restaurants quite nearby. Uh, yes, so Sylvia said, thank you. Uh, when she's put a few things together and told you just what she thinks of you, we'll dine in one of them. an awful lot I want to tell you. I'm not so sure I want to hear. Sylvia, do you love Durant? I don't ask you whom you're in love with. I'm going to tell you anyhow. It isn't strange at all. It's very true and very real. Why do you doubt me? I can't help it. Why? You don't love Durant. Are you in love with anyone? Yes, I'm in love. With me? If I were in love with you, it wouldn't be because you had a new suit. Oh, Sylvia, I... Well, that's what it amounts to, isn't it? You say you love me. How do I know you do? Before I went to Paris, you... Well, certainly you... Were you in love with Grace? No. No, she with me. Why, love never even entered into it. It's what you think of as love. No, my dear. There was a time, but... Oh, don't you see? What you think of as love is nothing more or less than... Well, an emotional hurdle race. And what do you win? You're the last hurdle. And as long as I live, you will be the prize. Will you please tell Mrs. Stanton I couldn't wait? I've a boat for Paris to catch. Something I missed over there last trip. Beg pardon, sir? No, nothing, nothing. It's curious how attractive a girl can be on a honeymoon without a husband. <laughs> I must remember that. I know I shouldn't trouble you, sir, but... What? 
I was wondering about dinner, sir. Oh. Oh, I shouldn't bother them tonight. But uh, they'll need a hearty breakfast. I'm going to hold you closer than you've ever been held before. I've never been held close at all. As far as my life is concerned, it's been... been... Empty? Yes. Sometimes I've been very lonely and regretted it. But tonight, I'm glad. 